Hi, I hope you enjoy this felted Canada goose tutorial. It's one of my favorite projects because there are no feet and really no face. And they turn out quite nice and I, I know I enjoy watching the Canada geese come back in the spring and it's kind of fun to have them in my home year round. Um, to do this project you need uh, felting needles, a ruler, 13 inch and 10 inch wire, pipe cleaners, a foam piece to stab into, toothpick and wool. I used off-white, some browns and tans and a black. It's kind of nice to use up some different colors uh, in you know the gradations in the, the wings. Um, I start out with a 13 inch wire and fold it in half and you, know, you need to get a nice point on the uh, folded part because that's going to be the beak and you twist it to two inches and then just keep twisting and then you take your 10 inch wire and fold it in half and you twist on to your first part. Um, this is kind of the way most armatures start of animals or, or people, I guess. So you twist it on and then the long pieces go to the back and the shorter pieces go out to the side. Those are the wings. kind of messed up there I was not paying attention so I just had to twist that other side again to get the long piece going toward the back and then uh, you have your wings out to the side and then you twist this bottom part into the tail feather area and then if they're not equal lengths you can just sort of chop them off. So this is the bird armature. Just get them kind of straightened out. And you just kind of check it to be close. It's not an exact science or anything. And now I'm going to use pipe cleaners to help the wool adhere to the wire and it also makes it a little bit stronger. And then you just wind it around and uh, I'm not quite as careful as I probably should have been there. Um, and then you cut it just a little longer than the end so that you can wrap your piece around so you don't have a sharp point at the end of that wing. And then just go down the other side. And I shouldn't have been twisting, I should be wrapping the pipe cleaner around. If you're looking for some good tips on how to do this, watch a Serafina video because she is quite a good teacher. And uh, I had I kind of did this video for myself because I find often that if I do a project that I really like, I by the time I go to try and do it again, I have forgotten pretty much everything I knew. So that's why I did the video to begin with, more for my own uh, information and. Then I decided, since everybody was asking me to make them one, I people could make their own because it, it is quite a fun project. So now I'm just taking the other piece of pipe cleaner and going over the body. That gives it some strength and again, so that the wool adheres to the wire easier. And I'm just kind of going around and making that chest area a little stronger 
You don't always want a whole lot of wire in there because it does make stabbing a little more dangerous, easier to break a, a needle. And so now I believe I'm gonna put some white, uh, just get that on the neck and head so that the rest of the wool will adhere better. And as I said, there's no face or feet and fine details on this project. So I just went to the end and then came back and instead of just ripping it off, I just I was going to be going down the arms anyway, or the wings, so I just carried on. You don't really want that really hard stuff that gets fuzzy. You want to draft it out so that it doesn't, you don't have big chunks anywhere on your piece. And then that looks really dangerous. I didn't poke myself, but I usually could have. <laughs> and now what am I going to do? Because I'm going to take a skinny piece of black. And I'm going to go around. And the, this, the more you wrap the less you have to felt and that's really good on this particular part of the project because that neck is so long and lean and skinny and that shiny black looks really good and this is a tricky part um, when you've got a small a small area like this beak I've started to put a little needle in there and then go around the needle so that you the end of it is not a piece of wire and you can sort of felt into it. Um, this took a little practice and I believe since I have started using beeswax for areas like this. So if you are kind of versed in doing the beeswax, you could just put some beeswax on there and that would have worked probably a lot better than what I, I did, but I hadn't been using beeswax yet when I did this tutorial. I started using the beeswax when I was doing some fine feet. So there we go, the good wrapping really makes a difference. That neck is quite a bit bigger, so I'll get a little bit more wool on there. Again, wrapping nice and nice thin ribbon. Hmm. Looks a little chunky there. Technique has improved since I did this video. I watched a lot of Serafina videos since I did this. So you do a little stabbing. And get it kind of flat like a beak. Just kind of shaping it. If if you're better at wrapping than I was, you probably won't even have to do much stabbing.
So I just kind of get that beak so that it's firm and beak shaped. And um, we'll work on it a little bit more, but it's nice to have a good base for that beak. And now I'm going to take some white and make a little pillow and that will be sort of the start of our head. So just kind of rolling it and then stabbing it into a little pillow. You can see it's, it's not very much wool. So I just kind of made a little ball. You can see the <laughs> I didn't really want to use scissors there because I wanted it to be a little bit more gradual so so that it will be a nice smooth transition from the beak into the head. So I'm just stabbing that on there. <clears throat> just kind of being careful because there's a lot of wire in there. So you can see his head's taking a little bit of shape right now. And so then I want to get enough white all the way around because that bird has white all the way around. So I want to draft out a, a thin piece. And then make sure it starts off nice and thin so that it doesn't have a big chunk at the back there because you want this to be a nice gradual head shape. And uh, if you need to uh, go online and just find the, a nice side view, side and top view maybe of a Canada goose, it's always good to have those real life images or pictures or anatomies to look at. I'll often Google anatomy of a whatever bird I'm doing or animal and you can just get that true shape. You just want this to stay on and you want the nice shape, nice smooth shape. And you want that head to have the, the right volume. I found that every one of these I made looked a little different, but they all, I was happy with pretty much all of them. I guess these are more of an artsy Canada goose than uh, realism. And because I put them all on mobiles, they're up a little high so you're not all that close. Um, like you are when you say you do a, a, a dog or a cat that you're holding in your hand. And not that um, everything has to be realism, but it's nice. These are more a, a graphic. Uh, type rendering of a Canada goose. <clears throat> now I'm going to use the black and nice thin strips again and get that little shape of the, the goose head. So that's where you, you mean you can look at mine or 
probably better off to look online for a nice uh, anatomy of a Canada goose to get that shape because it's not just it's not a straight band it's kind of angled so this is where you just want to wrap really nice and tight so that you don't have to um, stab so much because that nice shiny ribbon looks really good And then you kind of stop suddenly because it is a really sharp um, line. I think on most of my videos I've sped them up quite a bit but this one I'm not speeding up at all because I know people commented that it, speeding it up did not help them so bear with me if you're way ahead of me on this and you want to get that nice beak nice and shiny and smooth and flat Here I'm trying to get that shape. It is a tricky beak and yeah, if you use beeswax, this would be a good time to do it. You might want to, there are quite a few good videos on using beeswax to make a nice smooth anything, any shape. Um, a lot of people use them for the paws and, uh, and any kind of hard parts, maybe if you're doing feet on a bird. It works really good. This guy seems to be turning out not too bad. Well, actually, he looks quite good. So you just fuss with them and you don't have to worry about eyes because I think the eyes are in the black part. I could be wrong on that, but, but you don't have to worry about eyes. When I do eyes, I usually make them out of beads. And oh, you don't have to do noses either for this. And I, those I usually make out of Fimo dough. I'm doing dogs or whatever but this works really good so I just uh, straightened out that line there so it's nice and clean you've got a nice white stripe there on his head and then you just keep just kind of keep refining it All right, he's looking kind of good. It's already looking like a Canada goose. So just keep working on him and looking at your pictures and or mine or whatever. Oh, this one actually looks better than the sample. Okay, so now I'm going to do the body. So here I'm using, I don't even know what color you would call that, but it was not hard to find, so hopefully you can find some of that. Um, let's say it's Canada Goose color. So now I'm gonna go with his, start with his neck, and you kind of want to go out and back, 
so that you're going over top where you started and it doesn't go too far into the the bird and here's where you do the nice little tricky um, cross over I hope you can see what I did there you're gonna go around the shoulders and make kind of a crisscross so that gives it the strength hopefully I'll do it again here Start back there. You go over and under and then over again. And how did I do that? No, that's not it. Wrong. Well, if you do the crisscross around there a few times, you'll come up with a nice strong shoulder part to keep those wings nice and in their place. It's another Serafina trick for shoulders. And like I say, this uh, project is pretty forgiving. Now I'm going to go down the top part of the wing I don't know if it really even matters what color you do use here because you actually wrap the wing part around this that looks kind of messy but I don't think it really matters. I think I was just getting enough wool on there to stab into later. Looks like a pretty chunky piece that I'm using there. I'm just wrapping it. Obviously not all that careful about this part. Like I say, it gets um, covered by the wing. Okay, so I'm just covering, it looks like I'm just using scraps almost just to cover those wing bits. Kind of looks like I didn't remember what I was doing. But I think actually you do want to cover them with that color because in case anything shows through. Be careful stabbing because there's obviously a lot of wire in that area. And now I'm going to do his tummy. So here's where I make a good sized pillow. So you just kind of want to grab, I don't know, that looks like about a, I don't know, six inch piece. And hopefully I get on camera pretty soon. Winding it around something small. I had a paintbrush there. So I'm winding it so that it's bigger in the middle. So you got to kind of go out and back. 
and then uh, I'm going to stab it so that it has that kind of rounded half half circle shape. A belly shape and that's going to go from just below the neck to the top of where those tail feathers start I'm going to stab that tummy onto him. Probably could have used, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go put some more wool down there so I have something to stab into. And also maybe to make him a little bit fuller already, but you need something, some wool on there to stab into. I'm surprised I don't poke myself a lot more. It looks really dangerous. Okay, so more wrapping. I guess I needed a bigger base for that tummy to go on to. And yeah, you want to get some wool on those that tail so that you have some place for that to adhere to as well. This is a handy tool. Okay, so now I'm stabbing that tummy on. So you're going to wrap this later in that Canada Goose color, so you want this tummy to be underneath to give that shape. And watch for those wires, because there's a lot of wires in there. Keep stabbing that on and maybe taking a glance at your Canada Goose picture or side view. I should really have this on a piece of styrofoam or the foam I'm using. Probably would work better. Stabity, stabity, stab. Okay, so now I'm going to be drafting out kind of a long, skinny piece 
so that I can go around the whole thing. Start the top there. Go around his neck so it's nice and smooth transition. And you want to cover all that white. I guess if you wanted to, you could easily have used this color for the chest pillow. That probably would have been a wiser choice. But you do want to wrap it all. Yeah, actually, if I were to do it again, I would use the uh, Canada Goose color for that pillow. Then you don't have to be quite so careful. Yeah, this is probably not the way to do it, but I guess it worked. There is no one way to do a lot of the felting. There are a lot of ways that are better than others. Um, And you probably find your own as you go. I tend to find really good ways to do things and then I totally forget them the next time I do it. Yeah, so just get your Canada Goose color on there over top your chest and tummy. Get it stabbed in there nice and firm. Keeping an eye on your shape. Just more wrapping, getting that color on there. Stabbing, stabbing. I guess I should tell jokes or something while I'm just doing boring stabbing. While we're both doing boring stabbing. I don't have any right now. Maybe I'll think of some tomorrow. Okay, so I just keep stabbing away at that tummy, getting it the right shape. And... You don't really have to worry about those wings quite yet. Um, we do use a different technique for those. I tried a little wet felting and it seemed to work really good. I think you could just regular felt, but I wanted to try this technique for this bird and it worked well, so I carried on. Um, I don't know if you know any goose jokes. Um, how do you get down from an elephant? You don't. You get down from a goose. <laughs> okay, so I'm comparing him now. And you might want to compare him to your drawings or to mine, whichever you like. Now this is how I made the wings. It's all one piece that I cut out of felt. So you kind of cut the base and it's smaller than the wings. And this is the shape. Now, I don't know how to get you that shape. Um, I don't know if you can do a screen capture of the uh, video or 
that might work. Um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't put it on a ruler or anything, so sorry about that. Uh, anyway, this is just a piece of felt. And then I cut out this shape. I must have gotten it off somewhere on the internet, uh, the shape from above of wings, and then just cut it a little bit smaller. So I put it on my little piece of styrofoam. And this is where I started using all the different colors of the kind of warm grays. I started out with really quite thin pieces and you're letting it go um, above and below the piece of white felt. And just starting off with a nice thin base so that you can really get those different feather colors because there, there's quite a gradation in them. And like I said, it's not a, a realism, it's more of a graphic goose, but the the colors really make him, give him that classic goose look, Canada goose look. So I just keep layering this. Like I say, going above and below the, um, the white piece of felt underneath. And then I'm just gonna stab that into place so it stays where it's supposed to. Kind of stabbing it in lines, kind of feather-like, you know, marking out those the feather type areas. Okay. And then I think I'm probably looking for some some different colors. And this is a darker brown, I believe, or maybe even a black. And it maybe it's just really thin pieces of black. And I kind of stretched them out so they would, you know, give the effect of feathers, thin feathers. And it kind of tapers dark to light in the middle so the darker pieces are on the outside oh yeah i think that was a brown a darker brown and now i'm using black and then stabbing kind of in a line it's kind of giving that sh you know a, a defined line that you know almost looks like a an individual feather Like I say, I use the wet felting technique on this, but I think you could just stab it and keep stabbing it and get the same effect. But this was fun. And now I just turned it over and I'm basically going to do the same thing. And the, the layers really give you the different colors. That's what I, I like about the layers. Again, something I learned from watching Serafina videos. So I'm covering up that white base underneath. Keep layering nice and thin because you don't want these um, wings to be thick. 
the layers should be thin. And then again, yeah, this was a brown, a darker brown, going from the outside in. Started out doing some sort of individual looking wings, but I or feathers, but I found this it just looked better. Just the hint of that they're long, skinny feathers. But you could do whatever you want, obviously. Try some one way, some another way. I did a pelican after this, and I basically almost did um, quite a bit of it in individual feathers, and he turned out really nice. Maybe I'll have to do a tutorial on him, because he, he's pretty cool. And that's two of the birds that we have here in the summertime that are just fun to watch. Pelicans are just cool. So again, just go down straight, do your lines just kind of straight as the feathers would go. You might find different, well, you will find that different needles work differently. I do have a lot of nice needles that I got. I got a whole um, group of needles that had uh, three of each kind of needle. I think there were seven different ones or maybe more. And it really does make a difference which ones you use. Um, I'm not well versed enough or remember right now which ones work better for what things so if you have different ones give them a try um okay so now I'm, I'm just getting it ready for the wet felting so I'm just doing a little bit of extra making sure it's felted into the white piece of felt underneath and then I'll be going over and taking it to my kitchen sink area where I will have a towel that I folded up and um, some paper towel that I'm gonna set the wings on and I'll have some plastic wrap handy. Uh, so you have to get that all ready and then you're gonna need a cup of hot water with some hand soap in it. And they called for a sponge, but all I had was a cloth, so that's what I used. So I just have the paper towel and I have my project on it. And I put, just get that ready. And now my so hot soapy water, I just use hand soap few squirts you don't want to get too too much in there because it does it's hard to get the soap out after but I just uh, <laughs> probably need to stab a little more uh, I just dab it in there and get it soaked through but you want to make sure you're doing it flat so it stays in place I'm 
just getting it nice and wet with the soapy water. Turn it over and do the same on that side. Being quite careful. Now I put the plastic over top and you want to rub or you want it to get the water right in there so you're squishing it down. You want it all the way through to that to the middle part. And then you want to work it in the direction you know kind of around but in the direction of the feathers so you're working it through trying to get those fibers to mesh and that soap helps with that you just keep working at it trying to get those fibers to come together Oops. It's pretty forgiving. So I guess you just keep doing this and working those fibers in. I believe I was listening to a um, tutorial from, from a lady who does um, flat 2D works. And uh, so you can't really muck them around too much if you've got, if you've got um, say trees and, and objects that are recognizable. Um, you can't be moving them around too much. You just have to do it carefully so that the images stay where they're supposed to, so. I'm just keeping working at it. I've always wanted to try making slippers or mittens because I like, I like the idea of this wet felted stuff. You can see it's starting to come together already. And now you just work it with your hands a little bit. I think I'm putting some soap on my hands. Not exactly sure how this works because it doesn't really look like it's moving at all, but it did stay together, so I must have been doing something right. I guess the rubbing does make it stay together, because if you have a, a poodle or a dog like that, um, that <laughs> uh, the hair rubs together and starts matting or felting, I guess that's how it works. So it's just something you just keep doing on and working on for quite a while. And then, oh yeah, forgot about this part. Then you roll it up. And then you roll it up in your towel. And this is, this is another part of the felting. You're rolling that and that gets those fibers meshed together too. And then I believe we'll turn it around and do it the other way. I think she probably said do it for like a minute or something.
And then we're going to cover it up again and roll it up the other way. Hope I'm doing this right. It, it worked for me anyway, so. So just keep rolling, rolling. Okay, now it now I appear to be putting hot water and soapy hot soapy water on there again. And then rubbing it between my hands. And then I think I rinse it out. Yeah, there we go. Rinse it out. Okay, so now I just dried as much as possible with the towel, get as much of the water out as possible. And then because I'm fairly impatient, I use the hair dryer to dry it the rest of the way. And as you can see, um, you can see that felt right through the fibers, the white felt. So maybe I could have gone a little darker, or not darker, but thicker with the fibers. So you get that nice and dry so that you can work with it right away. Because at this point, you know, I was pretty excited to try and get that those wings on there. So there, it's nice and dry. Okay, so now it's dry and I'm excited to get it stuck onto the bird. And there he is all naked. And so I'm going to felt that those wing piece onto the top of the bird. So you want to get the shape of those wings kind of where that bend is supposed to be. And you can see it's about one third the way from the body. Again, if you're looking at a picture on the internet or if you cut one out, which is a good idea, especially if you're doing more of these for a mobile, uh, it's nice to have them all the same size. <clears throat> I'm sorry I didn't have a, a template for you. I guess I wasn't that prepared. So now we're just basically going to wrap this wing piece around the arm wires. And be careful because there's a lot of wire there. So this is going to take a fair amount of stabbing. So just kind of wrap it around and stab it and just keeping in mind where that bend is. It's a little tricky getting that neck piece kind of smooth, but you'll work with it and stab and, and bend. And just keep working at it and looking at your drawings as to where that band is. Drawings or your pictures or if you cut something out. I was lucky to have had one to put over top of it. And if you're doing more than one of these, you'll be glad to have something to work to. You can see the nice gradations of that wing 
where it goes from that lighter color to the dark and it is very appealing i really like it this one turned out really good they all turned out kind of different but i thought they all looked quite good i was happy with them all it's one of the things when you're doing these that because they're kind of graphic it, it if they look slightly different it doesn't really matter as opposed to if you're doing a dog and his eyes are a little too far apart he just looks odd or you know if the legs are too short or too long it's not very forgiving but these are these are fun and I think they look nice and they are quite forgiving so look at him oh isn't he pretty and uh, oh I'm trimming him already so I thought pinking chairs would work good, but I, it, it is kind of hard to cut this stuff. So you do need a fairly sharp pair of scissors. And you, you might want to, you know, cut these almost like feathers where you're going in and out like pinking shears would do and just do what you like. And then you just want to work with the feathers, get that adhered to the body. So there's just a lot of stabbing and I'm using different needles here, just trying some different. Sometimes you get one that just works great for doing a specific thing. Stabbing in yeah, and keeping in mind how much wire is in that area. It's a lot. Because it's nice to, when you have an armature, if you've got a fair amount of wire, you can shape these wings. Like I had mine going up, middle, and down. So there was quite a bit of movement on the mobile. Uh, but, you know, obviously you can do whatever you want. You can have them all up or just however you would like to. So yeah, you wanna... I think that bend is about a third of the way from the head. Out. And you wanna make sure those wings stay attached. You don't want to have to do some reconstructive surgery later on. It reminds me I have a chickadee that my mom asked me to fix because his feet <laughs> fell off. So, yeah. I like chickadees, but I think my favorite bird to do is to felt is the goose because he has no feet, no eyes, and he's just pretty. So there we go, we're getting there. It's more stabbing. That belly shape can be nice and pronounced. As you can see, I have sneakily added some more of the goose color onto the bottom of this one. This is actually, I was doing two at once, so this is actually a, a different bird, but very similar. Um, and so I'm getting it ready to do the uh, tail. I appear to be confused. Oh, okay. So I used a piece of felt again for the tail. And this is the first time I've ever, ever used 
an actual piece of fabric felt for a project. But it, it worked good, and I don't feel like I'm cheating. Not very much, anyway. I could have made the tail. And I think on the first one I did, I did make the tail. So if you want to make a tail, I mean, just grab a piece of black and felt a, a flat piece into that shape. Um, it, it appears as though I kind of cheated and I just finished off the tail without showing how I did it, but Again, you can look online to see how they look. And it's kind of like that. Now, I had put some of those little white feathers on the tail and some of the goose color on the tail. And I left it kind of fringy so that I would be able to felt it onto the back of the goose, as you could see. So you're just putting your tail on, your tail feathers on. So then I just grabbed some black fibers and put it over top the kind of messy tail end that I had. And I bent those, those wires down and then just felted it onto. And you have to want to be careful because if you did some white feathers on the other side, you don't want this black going through and messing up your nice white feathers that you did on the other side. So you just want to be kind of careful. I'm not sure that I was careful, so we'll see when I turn this over exactly what happens. But that uh, little piece of fiber on there make it adhere very good. There's just a little bit of the, the goose color. There, I didn't wreck it too much. Now just a little bit of cleaning up to do there. And it's not cheating if you're pretty much done, but you have a little bit of fuzz sticking out. You can cut it. It's not cheating at all. So there we have it. We've got uh, another little goose for our mobile. He looks good. And so, like I say, you can uh, shape those wings however you want. I did mine up, down, and middle for the mobile. But you can do however you like. And I used um, fishing wire to attach them to a piece of driftwood that I had. And I put the wires kind of at the shoulders and tail. And so, yeah, you can trim any little fuzzies that you don't want hanging around there. And that is the duck. So I hope this has been a helpful tutorial. 
And you can let me know in comments. And I'll probably get back to you. And thanks so much. Bye-bye.